Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be seeing all the weirdness that comes with high altitude maneuvering, kind of understanding just what's going on. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, if you saw our previous video, you had a pretty good idea of the understanding of the fact that as we get into higher altitude, our jet engines are not going to be producing the same thrust as they are at low altitude. Coupling with that, of course, is there's less drag. Coupling with that, of course, to make things even more exciting for us, is the fact that we have this interesting problem where the air is thinner, and that's going to cause our aircraft to have a reduced handling characteristics. As a matter of fact, they're going to be so reduced, you're going to think you'd be flying a completely different jet. Now, right now, we're sitting here at about 36,000 feet, give or take. Again, I didn't do a super precise climb. We're hovering at about 0.80 Mach. And what you observe here is that my indicated airspeed is about 262 knots. Um, so the first thing we're going to see is we're going to see what happens with acceleration at these altitudes. So if you remember earlier in our previous video, we did a little demonstration showing how quick these aircraft accelerate at high alt or low altitudes. Now we're going to go ahead and see how poorly they accelerate at altitudes like this. So flying on down here, you can see I'm sitting here at about 90% of my RPM. And you can also see here, I'm doing about 256. I'm actually slowing down even more drastically here. I'm going to go ahead and push my throttles out pretty aggressively forward here, and I'm going to stomp it all the way to my maximum performance. Now, what I want you to observe is this number. What is it doing? Full throttle. Yes, I'm losing speed. The aircraft is slowing down. I'm at maximum throttle right now. I literally cannot push these two guys any further forward. They're all the way at the stops right now. And my aircraft is not only slowing down, but if you look, because I'm actually losing speed here, you can actually watch my angle of attack slowly start to increase. As this angle of attack actually starts to get bigger, that's also, of course, going to create more drag, which naturally is going to create it this nice little loop that's going to basically slow me down even more. Now, some people, of course, are like, there's a solution to this. It's that button on your left pinky. Oh, this one, you mean? Oh, there it goes. Now we are dumping a ton more fuel into the uh, jet exhaust. The nice thing about afterburners is they're slightly more immune to this effect than a regular jet engine is. And you can see, we're accelerating. Nice. <laughs> we're accelerating nicely, actually. You, know, you can see uh, we're picking up some speed. My gas temperature's up, burning almost 20,000 pounds of fuel per hour. Um, yeah. And you can see we're starting to get some speed. Our angle of attack is uh, starting to come down a little bit. But um, notice just the sheer amount of effort it's taking me to change speed. Now, if I were to come here, of course, and I'll back my throttle out real quick, and I'll push it back forward to take us out of afterburner, I should probably put a button for that one day. You'll notice well, we just slow down to nothing, and the plane's just going to go and basically come way down from the speed. Now, the other thing you'll probably observe is the fact that because we have a less angle of attack when we built up our speed, you'll probably observe the fact that this aircraft is actually still accelerating without afterburners. That is because of the region of reversal. This aircraft is unable to accelerate once it gets under a specific speed without excessive energy. Once you get above that specific speed, the aircraft actually has the ability, as we're observing right now, to accelerate completely normally on its own. Now, the challenge that we're going to face now is, let's say I want to maintain a specific speed here. Uh, let's say I'm going to drop down to 300 knots. Now, if I were to pull my throttle back here, and we'll go ahead and do a pretty serious reduction of speed. I will give it a few moments to kind of get sort of caught up here. It's definitely going to take some effort on this part. 303, I'm going to go ahead and start pushing the throttle all the way forward again. And we're going to try to catch it. Yes, that's the new problem. All power changes now are magnified. There's no gentle power changes. Everything has to be a massive power change because of just the lack of energy. Now, there's another interesting problem we're actually facing right now. Now, this is one of those things that people forget, especially when we do a little bit of maneuvers in a minute. And that's the fact that this aircraft is not actually moving 304 knots. It is moving substantially faster. Now, just because this shows that we're only doing 304 knots doesn't actually mean that the aircraft is not doing 517 knots. Now, you're probably saying, why does that matter? It's called momentum. This aircraft right now has, um, like I said, 556 knots worth of momentum with the control ability of 307 knots coupled with the fact that these controls themselves have reduced access and reduced accessibility. What does that mean for us? Uh, that means that this aircraft right now is going to be not having half of the controllability, but it's going to be having about 10% of the controllability, just to give you an idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip off my autopilot real quickly here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate something that we saw in the previous video. That was a very gentle roll. Now, if you remember that gentle roll, I basically didn't have to move my stick very far. As a matter of fact, if you look, it's not much. Now, when I do my snap roll, you'll notice the performance was almost exactly the same as it was when we were about 250. We're at 305 knots. 
Now, the reason this gets really, really interesting is when we have to take a turn. Now, my power right now is uh, set to about uh, 91% RPM. It's, um, if you look over my stick here, you can see this thing's pretty far forward. That's uh, basically set on my 75% D10. So I'm going to go ahead and execute a nice little turn. So what I'll do is I'll push my throttle all the way forward, build up a little bit of energy. I'm going to go ahead and snap on the afterburners there. And we're just going to go ahead and do that same turn we did earlier. Now, if you remember earlier, uh, we were able to pull this turn at about 7 degrees, and we didn't lose a lot of speed. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back. I'm going to go back down to about 250 knots here. And that looks pretty darn good. And a little more. There we go. About 250. Now, a couple different things you're going to observe. Uh, the first one is, uh, now that I've passed the 250 knot mark, this aircraft is slowing down so rapidly, I can't even turn. As a matter of fact, I might have to do a uh, energy re uh, regaining maneuver to basically get it back. The second thing you'll probably observe is I can't maintain that beautiful tight bank that I did at low altitude. I am at full everything right now. And I am barely doing um, basically 250, and I'm pulling basically 2Gs right now. That's it. We're getting 2Gs at full afterburner when we were getting close to 5 or 6 before. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to get 5 or 6Gs at 250 knots. It's challenging. Remember, my aircraft right now is actually taking a 400 knot turn with the controllability and lift of a 250 knot turn. So you can start to understand how difficult it is to get this aircraft to actually maneuver. Now, people, of course, say, so what are the upshots? So what, what are we going to do? How do? What are we supposed to do then? The key thing is be gentle and always remember that once you start getting into that minimum speed range, your aircraft is going to become very uncontrollable. Now, this problem gets a lot worse as you start to get even higher. So we're currently at about 45,000 feet. That took a little while to get here, by the way. And uh, we're full afterburner. We're full of everything we can possibly get right now. We are absolutely stomping on it. And you'll observe that my indicated airspeed is now 260, and my Mach number is very, very high. Now, if I were an airliner, this combination is deadly, because this would be my limit as far as being too slow. This would now be my limit as far as preventing my aircraft to shake itself apart as because of Mach Buffett. Now, because we're in a fighter jet here for the purposes of demonstration, that's not as scary of a problem, because you basically have a better limit, with the exception of that lower drag limit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pop us out of afterburner here. I'm just going to go up to full throttle here and just give it just a few moments to kind of stabilize. Now, one of the things you're probably observing is the Microsoft Flight Simulator Automatic Pilot here is struggling to stabilize the aircraft because it has such reduced control authority. Uh, there's definitely, I think I'm going to have to file a squawk on that one because it should be a little bit more stable. It's not like there's any weather. So right now I'm at absolutely full throttle. Um, we're about 267 indicated. And... Um, yeah, um, even when we get outside of that region, you can see we just don't even have enough thrust. So what has happened is, as our altitude has gone up, the speed we have to maintain in order to prevent us from getting that kind of region reversal downward trend of drag goes up as well. And that's just none of the other reasons why high altitude is so challenging. Now, of course, people who are dogfightists uh, who are watching this managed to track this one down and said, okay, now you've, you've showed me some things here. Why don't they just do a split S? Okay, we'll do that. Full throttle, flip upside down. And we're going to go ahead and uh, pull back on the stick here. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, see, free energy, free energy. Uh, we'll just get up to my maneuvering speed here, and we'll be able to pull a split S with no problem. By the way, does anybody notice that I'm at Mach 1.1? 1 .1? All right, I'll we'll go ahead and uh, pull this nice little split S. Um, if you look carefully, you'll see that I'm pulling 1.7 Gs, and there's my maneuvering speed. I'm going to bring the stick to my chest. And you can see we are in the rain danger of overstressing the airplane. There we go. There's 7 Gs right there. 7.1 Gs. We'll come out of that one nice and smoothly. And the whole aircraft started buffeting, which is awesome. And you'll see there that uh, we started at 45, and now we're at 23,000 feet. If you were to do that same maneuver at lower altitudes where the air is considerably thicker, you could probably do it in less than 10. Enjoy.